Right now, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic car shadow inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a realistic cast shadow. Now a cast shadow is different than a drop shadow. A drop shadow happens when there's something solid behind you which is uh, level to the viewer, such as a wall behind me or something like that. A cast shadow is where it's on the ground or something like that where you actually cast a shadow. Now there's a couple of things to bear in mind. One, as the shadow gets further away from the subject, it gets more transparent and also the edges get softer. So it becomes darker and harder edge the closer it gets to the subject. So I was thinking about this and I came up with a brand new method of creating this cast shadow. It just kind of makes sense for me and I love kind of figuring these things out. It's kind of like you know solving a puzzle or um, you know playing chess. And if you have anything like that, that you have a challenge for me in Photoshop, let me know in the comments underneath. I'd love to know what it is. All right, so we're gonna jump in right now and create this shadow. So here we go. I'm just gonna use this gear against a white background. I'm gonna keep it very, very simple as far as the subject matter so we can focus on the actual steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the layers panel and we're gonna click on effects and we're gonna create a new layer style. Now you might think I'm gonna choose drop shadow I'm not going to use the drop shadow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a gradient overlay. All right, so the gradient overlay comes up and what this does is it just basically puts a gradient over the top of our image. So what I want is a black to gray gradient. So why don't we go here? We're going to start with just, you know, the standard black to white gradient. And if you don't see that, just hit the D key, reset your foreground background colors and then click on the first one. There's also one right there. Now we want to modify this slightly. To modify a gradient, just click on that gradient and then the gradient editor will pop up. So what I wanna do is change it from black to gray. So we see black there, these color stops at the bottom are how we change the color of the gradient. So click once on that stop and we'll see the color, click again, and now we're gonna change it to a gray. So let's do a gray like that and maybe go a little bit more and you can kind of see what's happening now. We're getting a black to gray. Click OK. And if you need to tweak it, you can go in here, you can change the scale, you can do different things. You can click and drag on canvas. See there if you want to change the position of that gradient. And I kind of like what we've got there. This should work quite well. So I'm going to click OK. All right. So what we're now we've got a effect. So what I want to do is turn this effect into an actual shadow. So why don't we right click on effects and then we're going to go down to create layer. This changes a layer style into a layer and see here we go. Now there's a gradient fill. We're almost there. We're not quite there yet. What we want to do now is we want to mask this out. So we have it in the shape of the cog. So the way to do that is to go down to the cog layer, hold down the control on Windows, that would be Command on Mac, and click once, that loads the selection. You see the marching ants, everything is selected. Now we want to change this gradient so that this gradient fits inside that selection. So the way to do that is select the gradient, go down and create a new layer mask just by clicking the layer mask. There we go, now we've got that, we're almost there. And so what I want to do though is blend this into one layer. So on the layer mask, right click, and we're going to choose apply layer mask. There we go. Now we've got this gradient in the shape of there. We want to put it underneath. So just click it and drag it. See that little line appears directly underneath that release. And now we've got it underneath. Let me demonstrate. There's our gear. Look underneath, there's our gradient. Excellent. What we want to do now is we need to warp this to kind of fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control or Command T. So that's Control T on Windows, Command T on Mac. Now we enter free transform mode. This enables us to transform the shadow, which you can see we've selected there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down. Now I'm on CC 2019, so if I drag, it's gonna drag uniform. 
The other thing I want to do is I want to set the point, uh, the pivot point. So if you're on an earlier version of uh, Photoshop, you can just simply click down. But what I want to do is I want to move the pivot point to the bottom. So the way to do that is we have to go up here on the top left. I know it's not obvious, but that's how you turn on the pivot point. And we could click on the bottom there that sets the pivot point to the bottom. That means now when I transform this, notice it's going to do it from that point. Now what I want to do though is I'm going to hold down the shift key and now this will drag it down like that, see? Now before CC 2019, of course, you didn't have to hold the shift key. So we could define our ground plane however we want. So why don't we just start with it there? Now I want to skew this. In other words, just kind of twist it. So what we're going to do is right click. And these are all the different options that are under free transform. One of them is skew. And if we turn on skew, move to that middle handle, see the double arrow there. All we need to do now is just click and drag across to just kind of skew that. Now, if I want to work on this a little bit more free, I can right click again and this time choose distort. And under distort, now I can see how I can drag these individual points to just kind of change the way that this is falling so you can match the angle of your surface. You know, it might be a flat ground, it might be, you know, something else, it could be a slope. And this will do. So we're just going to click OK. And now we can see we've got that. All right, so let's make this really start to come together. What we're going to do is change this to multiply blend mode. Now, if there was a colored background, it would start to show through there. And now I'm going to take my opacity and bring it down a little bit. All right, now this is where it really starts to look realistic. We're going to go under filter and now we're going to go under our blur gallery. Now under blur gallery, we're going to choose field blur. And when we do, you see this pin is going to appear there and we can increase or decrease the amount of blur just by moving on this pin. So I'm kind of setting it for the distance, but I want the front to be a little sharper. So what I'm going to do is click here to create a second pin and notice we can have that very, very sharp or very soft. So I'm just going to play around with this. So we've got it sharper at the front. And then it starts to fall off. Notice it gets softer as it goes away, like a real shadow would. Click OK. All right, all we're going to do now is just play around with our opacity. We could turn it up or we could turn it down. See what we're doing here just to create this. Let's move the shadow around a little bit just so it lines up a little bit better. And I'm also going to hit Control T for free transform. Go back into right click and choose distort one more time and see how I can just play around with this. I can make it longer. I can change the shape of this shadow. You know, there's a lot of different things I can do, you know, based on that. And if I click OK, drag it in a little bit, maybe make the opacity a little darker. And now you can see as it gets further away, it gets more transparent and it also gets softer, just like a real shadow. So I'm curious if you learned anything new in this tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comments underneath. And if you're not a subscriber yet to Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Usually I upload every Tuesday, so make sure you ring the notification bell so you know when I upload. Anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.